What's up, UConn Nation, and welcome back to another week of UC Sports. I'm Julia Dowd, alongside my co-host, Jalen Green. We're going to get into all the action from this past week today. Thanks, Julia. And yes, we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump right into it. UC Sports starts right now. An update on the James Booknight case, according to Hartford Current's Dom Amore, new details indicating conflicting stories as to whether Booknight had permission to use the car he crashed from the incident in September, although he has turned himself in on the charges against him. Head coach Dan Hurley says he's handled discipline internally so far, and it is not clear if Booknight will face suspension when games begin. Hopefully, that does not cause too many setbacks for the team, and first night still went off without a hitch. Speaking of first night, last Friday evening, Gamble Pavilion was jam-packed with fans and full of excitement as stores hosted their annual first night event. The program showcases both the men's and women's basketball teams ahead of their upcoming basketball seasons. As the night went on, the good vibes and excitement continued throughout as the special events c continued with the three-point shooting contest and the dunk competition. Both teams look ready and hungry for great basketball season led by their head coaches, both Gino Ariema and Dan Hurley. Yes, Jalen, I think both the coaches and the fans are hungry for an exciting basketball season. Over to football, Saturday was the annual homecoming game as the Huskies faced Houston. Although the game was competitive, the Huskies fell 24-17. to Coach Randy Etzel says the team is still a work in progress. However, the Huskies had defensively one of their best games of the season, only allowing Houston 284 yards in total and recording three sacks. Quarterback Jack Zergiotis connected with Matt Drayton in the second quarter giving them an early 7-3 lead, but Houston had the 10-7 edge by halftime. Art Tompkins was able to get another touchdown for the Huskies in the fourth quarter, but not scoring in the first really hurt them in the end. It's back to the field Saturday as the Huskies will take on UMass Amherst to try and make some, some of those offensive plays click. Speaking of the UMass game, the guys in the doghouse are ready to break it down further. Thanks guys and welcome into the doghouse where yes, we are here to debate UMass versus UConn. ESPN has dubbed it the pillow fight of the year. <laughs> two one and six teams, two teams really struggling, two teams that will be independent next year. Obviously UMass already is and UConn will be next year. Now the Huskies open the week as nine and a half point favorites, but as of right now, they are 10 and a half point favorites on the road at UMass. So my question for you guys is, will the Huskies cover the spread? Eric, we'll go to you first. UConn is not covering the point spread this week. Let me repeat that. They are not covering the point spread. Um, UConn beat Wagner by three points. I'm going to repeat that too. UConn beat Wagner by three points, guys. Um, I'd see them winning this game for sure, but I just don't see the 10 and a half points being feasible. Uh, UMass recently beat Akron 37 to 29, and I personally believe that Akron is a better team than Wagner. Um, yeah, UConn has made strides. They played a good game against Houston. I see them winning this game, but I just don't see the 10 and a half. Excuse me, ten and a half being possible. Richard, um, being at the game at Houston, I think that UConn defense was electric. That run defense, they, Houston could not run the ball on us at all. We missed a couple big plays, but I think that if we connect on one or two of those, it's going to be a whole different game. And against a team like UMass, we could definitely hit on one or two, and it's going to be the game. And that's going to be why we win by so much because we're going to win. It just depends on how much we're going to win by. That's why I do believe we're going to cover. I'm going to agree with you on this one, Richard. I think that the Huskies have a lot to play for this week. Their pride has been damaged after winning their game, first game of the year. They've lost six straight. They want to come out. They want to show that they're better than UMass. And better by a substantial amount. And like you said, Zergio just missed a couple of long balls last week that could have potentially swung the game in favor of the Huskies. The defense was flying around. They're easily their best game of the season. 
think they're going to come out. I think they're going to play their best performance, complete performance of the season. I think they're going to beat UMass. I disagree, but I guess that we'll find out. Well, huh? we all agree at least that they're going to win. Yeah, I can go with that. Two of us agree they're going to cover the 10.5 point spread. Eric does not. Yeah, now, switching topics to <clears throat> first night this past Friday, the official kickoff of the 2019-2020 season for basketball here in stores. We saw a dunk contest that was filled with highlights and some lowlights, but we'll talk about the highlights. Which dunk do you think was better? Was it James Booknight's reverse, or was it Olivia Nelson Odota throwing one down? Richard, we'll go to you first this time. I think that the reverse definitely gets it. Um, the dunk contest is really about difficulty, um, and I don't know a lot of people or anyone else on this campus that could have made the Booknight dunk. That's why I think it's hands down better than the other one. Uh, so let me put it this way. There have been three women in the past 10 years that have been able to dunk a basketball. Let me, uh, Lisa Wesley, Candace Parker, and Britt Griner. You can add Olivia Nelson Adota to that list. Easily, in my opinion, it's more impressive that Olivia Nelson Adota was able to throw down a basketball than it was Book Knight taking 30 minutes to legitimately score that or hit that dunk. That's a good call. Book Knight, that was what, try <laughs> seven or eight? So, I don't know. Do you think Liv is going to throw it down during the season? You know what? I've actually personally talked about Liv, and she said, I'm going to try. So, I'll go with her word on it. I'll say, we'll yeah. Do it. Last year, she tried. <laughs> she couldn't throw one down first night. She didn't try during the year. This season, she threw one down. So, we'll have to see. Now, James Book Knight, rough week for him. He was flying high on first night, throwing down that impressive reverse dunk, also throwing one down over his teammate, Richie Springs. But then news came out on Tuesday that he was charged with pretty a serious crime. Or a couple of different things. Yeah, a couple different things. <clears throat> Fleeing from the police. He may have been driving under the influence. There was alcohol in his breath. This incident stemming from September 27th when he, when he crashed a car down in Store Center. He fled from the police. He was clearly not, misbeha not behaving as he should have been in that situation. It's going to be a fallout from this, certainly. We don't know what yet. There's still more reports coming out as the days go on about this incident. But what do you guys think will be his consequences? Um, I think this is a very serious situation. I don't want to um, de-escalate de uh, de this any more than it should be. Um, Book Knight made some really wrong choices. I think Coach Hurley will put some emphasis in the fact that he's a freshman. I think that um, he'll take it a little easier on him. I think he mentioned earlier in the week that he wants to see how he reacts to the reaction, not just from the press, but also just being on campus, the type of lifestyle that comes with being a freshman and the different things you have to adapt to. Um, I want to say personally, you know, he's only suspended two games. I could see this being just because I'm selfish and I want to see him play against Florida, but uh, I could see this stemming into something maybe from four to six. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but I, I think in the past we've seen Hurley last year with Jalen. I think he suspended him, um, Jalen Adams two games, and I think Sid Wilson six. So I, I'm going to go between um, four and six games. Richard? Uh, as you said, it's a serious allegation. Everything that went down that night, um, it's definitely regrettable for book night. And I think it's going to be somewhere around five games because you just got to, especially since he's a freshman, I think that you have to be harder on him. Um, it, it's... It's definitely a different, it's definitely a learning curve coming to a, a big university like this, being a stud basketball player. But you have to, you, have to, you understand that that's unacceptable. You can't have that in your program at all. Being a newer coach too of her, Hurley, um, you got to just lay down the law. You can't, you can't allow any of that, especially for a freshman. You, you, that's just not acceptable at all in your program. I think both of you make great points. I think that if this was year five or six for Hurley, it'd be a little different. I think he might be a little more relaxed, but. I mean, Hurley's reputation is still on the line. It's yeah. year two at UConn. He's, he has everything to prove, and so does Book Knight. And Book Knight made a mistake, and he's going to have to pay the consequences. And in my personal opinion, I definitely don't think he'll be back for that November 17th game against Florida here on campus. But as for after that, I think that only time's going to tell. I think the more information that comes out, and then his court hearing is in a couple days. So after that, we'll... I guess we'll see how the legal process plays out. But I don't see this being settled anytime soon. No, I don't think so either. But... For Book Knight's sake, I hope he can learn from this experience. I hope that it can only make him a better person and it can only make the team better people and better team collectively. So that's all we have from the doghouse today. We're going to send it back to Jalen and Julia in UC Sports. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Always fun to hear from the doghouse. An exciting week for field hockey as UConn got a huge win over Villanova on Friday. Each of the Huskies' starting defenders scored a goal, including Courtney Kennedy, Antonia Tiedka, and Lindsey Dickinson, all within two minutes of each other. But sadly, the momentum did not carry over Sunday, as number 15 Syracuse stole the win after a double overtime shootout. UConn had a great offensive pressure all game long, but could not score. It was the first overtime. 
The Huskies dominated with five penalty corners and five shots, but it was Syracuse who scored twice in the shootout that sealed the deal. As the temperature begins to change, it's time for hockey season. So far, the UConn men's hockey team has had its early struggles with a record of 1, 2, and 1. But luckily, the team is coming off a win over RPI, winning the second matchup of their two-game series, 5-2. to two. The next opponent for the men's team is another two-game series in early November versus Merrimack. Let's hope the team can rebound and get things back on track. As for the women's team, they have a great record of 4-2. and two. They are recently coming off a shootout win in overtime versus Merrimack, 4-3. to three. The next challenge for them starts tomorrow as they begin the Icebreaker Tournament on Friday evening in Buffalo, New York. They will take on Colgate University. The volleyball team is experiencing similar struggles to the men's hockey team and is on a five-game losing streak. The Huskies lost to Memphis 3-2 and got swept by Southern Methodist University three games to none this past weekend. Despite the losses, however, sophomore Kaylee Parker had a team high of 23 kills and 16 digs on Friday, while five freshmen saw action in the court, including Maddie Whitmire, who aided the team with 35 assists and five kills. With only eight games left in the season, hopefully they can get out of this slump and improve their record starting this Friday versus Wichita State. The men's soccer team has struggled this season. Currently, their record stands at 4-9-1. Their last game was a 2-1 loss in overtime versus the University of Central Florida. Luckily, their next three games are against American Conference opponents in order Temple University, SMU, and lastly Tulsa. Hopefully the men's team can end their season on a high note. For the women's soccer team, they have one more regular season game left against Temple at Dillon, Dillon Stadium in Hartford. The women's team is looking for a win to close out the season as their hopes for qualifying for the women's conference tournament. But it will be a tough try to make it all the way because they, they get a win on Halloween night against Temple. Their overall record will be 7-8-2. So if they have any tournament aspirations, the women's team will have to be on their A game. Now we're going to throw it over to Danny, our High Five analyst, to give you the top five plays throughout this UConn Sports Week. Thanks for the intro, guys. Really excited to get into this week's top plays, so let's get right into it. At number five, we have the UConn's men's soccer team going up against UCF. Zayad Fekri lobs the ball in, into the box off a cross to Jake Dangler, heading the ball in on a tough angle into the bottom right corner to tie the game late at 1-1. to Unfortunately, UConn would lose in overtime 2-1. Coming in at number 4, Art Tompkins shows off his shifty running skills after a quick check down from quarterback Jack Zergiotis gives Tompkins space as he evades two defenders, breaking the ankles of the second one before eventually being brought down. Tompkins had 100 yards combined on the day. And at number 3, we have UConn women's hockey. Morgan, Morgan Wabick takes control of the ball on UConn's end. And it's just a freight train to the net going all the way down herself, juking out one defender, but unfortunately could not finish the play as UConn would lose 1-0. For number 2, we are back with the UConn football. As Jack Sergiotis, the quarterback, gets the snap and throws a tough pass into tight coverage to wide receiver Ardell Brown as the ball bounces up, but somehow Brown is able to corral the ball and completes a catch. That's got to be up there for catch of the year. But it wasn't the best play of the week as first night on Friday gave us our number one. James Booknight in the dunk contest runs up and throws down this amazing 360 one-handed dunk to ignite the crowd into a frenzy. He also had another great dunk over his teammate Richie Springs jumping right over his head. Unfortunately, the talk around the campus has been less about his dunks and more about his recent legal troubles as he is likely to miss time to start the season. And that is all for the Husky High Five. Thanks for watching and I'll send it right back to Julie and Jalen. We have some breaking news stories to share this evening as for the women's basketball team, five-star prospect small forward Aaliyah Edwards of Canada has verbally committed her commitment to UConn. According to Alexa Filippolo of the Hartford Current, she's the fifth member of the 2020 recruiting class to join the Huskies. She was ranked as a 26th overall prospect and the fourth best at a position in the class. The Huskies continues to reload with talented prospects. And lastly, former UConn women's basketball player Nafisha Collier has just been engaged. Her longtime best friend Alex Basil asked her to marry him. Alex is currently an MBA and WNBA skills coach. Congratulations to them. Thank you, Jalen, for that breaking news. But sadly, that's all we have this week on UC Sports. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at UCTV Sports and subscribe to us on YouTube at UCTV Channel 14 for all the latest updates in UConn Sports. 
From Jalen Green and the rest of the crew here, I'm Julia Dowd, and we'll see you next time.